back to part four of this video series on algorithms and algorithm analysis. In this part, we look at the final step in algorithm analysis in detail and introduce the notion of asymptotic analysis and big O notation. Previous algorithm analysis resulted in various functions that characterized how many times the algorithm executed an elementary operation with respect to an input size of n. Some algorithms were linear, some quadratic, or even cubic, for example. Since we want to limit the number of resources an algorithm expends, lower resource measures are better, but how do we quantify this? Our goal will be as follows. Given a function f of n that quantifies the number of operations an algorithm performs, how can we characterize the function and thus the algorithm? First, we'll want to characterize an algorithm's efficiency as an input size grows towards infinity. This is because we're interested in how the algorithm scales with larger and larger input sizes. Also, given two algorithms that solve the same problem but with different resource functions, which is better? We won't want to focus on how algorithms behave for small input sizes, as the practical differences may not even matter, or even be measurable. In fact, performance on small inputs may even give a misrepresentation of an algorithm's efficiency. For example, consider the two plots pictured here. One plot is n cubed, and the other is a quadratic function. If we only examined the behavior for small inputs, less than 100, we would get the misimpression that the cubic algorithm performs better because its plot is smaller, which corresponds to less computation time or other resources. However, if we examine the plots for input sizes of greater than 100, it becomes clear that the cubic algorithm is worse and in fact gets much worse for ever-increasing input sizes. To capture this idea, we use asymptotic analysis, more specifically big O analysis. Formally, let f and g be functions. We say that f of n is big O of g of n if there is a positive constant c and an integer n naught such that for all values of n greater than or equal to n naught, f of n is bounded above by c times g sub n. The notation that we use is that f of n is in the big O class of functions characterized by g of n, or alternatively, that f of n is equal to big O of g. The O here is actually the Greek letter omicron. The first notation is more mathematically correct as big O represents a class of functions and f is a member of that set. The second notation is a bit of an abusive notation but is nevertheless common and is often used in courses in which proper set theory has not yet been introduced. The intuition behind big O is that an asymptotically smaller function is big O of an asymptotically larger function. It provides a way to define an upper bound on the resources used by an algorithm which matches our desire for a worst case analysis. Big O provides a way to characterize the order of growth of a function. It allows us to ignore constants as they can be rolled into the constant C, and it allows us to ignore lower order terms as the growth rate is more influenced by the highest order term in the function. These are exactly the properties that we wanted in our algorithm analysis in order to provide a more abstract analysis independent of any particular machine or language. However, it's important to understand that big O only provides an upper bound and not a tight characterization. For example, a linear function is big O of n, but it is also big O of a quadratic function. In a supplemental video, we cover big theta analysis, which provides a tight asymptotic bound. Given two functions, how do we prove an asymptotic relationship between them? There are several techniques that we'll cover. The first technique involves finding a crossover point after which one function will always be larger than the other. In terms of the definition, we fix the constant c and find the crossover point n naught. Another technique is just the opposite. Given two functions, we derive an inequality that conforms to the definition for some n naught. That is, we fix n naught and then we find the constant c. A third technique, the limit method, is covered in a supplementary video as it requires some calculus background. For now, we'll illustrate the first two techniques. We'll work on the same example as in the previous two plots. We want to show that 100n squared plus 50n is big O of n cubed. With technique A, we fix our positive constant c to be 1. We then want to show that for some n, the first function is bounded above by the second. We essentially want to find where the two functions intersect, that is, where they're equal. We can collect terms onto one side, which means that we're searching for the roots of this polynomial. We can factor out a common term, and so, 0 is one of the roots but it's not the largest root. But that does leave us with a quadratic equation, which allows us to use the quadratic formula to find the two other roots. The root that we're looking for is 100.4975. As per the definition, the next largest integer value is 101. 
So for c being 1, and for all n greater than or equal to 101, the inequality holds. And therefore, we've proven that 100n squared plus 50n is big O of n cubed. Finding roots can get quite complicated. It's easy with this example because it was all small polynomials. If we had a polynomial of degree k, we'd have to do a lot of work to find the largest k root. Often, it's easier to apply technique b, where we simply have to derive an inequality. Working on the same example, we'll initially fix n naught to be 0, and then we'll find our constant c. We want to show that 100n squared plus 50n is less than or equal to c times n cubed. The intuition behind this is that we're multiplying the function on the right hand side and scaling it vertically by a factor of c until it lies completely above the function. To illustrate this, here's the plot from before for c being 1. As we apply larger and larger values of c, the function becomes steeper in its vertical direction. We're not changing the growth rate, we're just scaling until eventually the function lies entirely above the other function for all values of n greater than or equal to 0. The technique itself is rather simple and easy. We start with the left hand side of the inequality. Then all you need to do is make it bigger. For example, 50n is less than or equal to 50n squared for all n greater than or equal to 0. So we can make the entire function bigger by replacing the second term. This allows us to simplify to one term. We can continue to do this and observe that n cubed is bigger than n squared for all non-negative values of n. At this point we've derived the inequality that we were seeking. For c being 150, and for all integer values n greater than or equal to 0, the inequality holds and we've proven the big O relationship. There was nothing special about these two values. In fact, there are an infinite number of pairs that would have satisfied the inequality. In fact, we illustrated eight such possible pairs in our previous visualization. All you need to do is find at least one pair. As another example, recall that selection sort made n squared minus n over 2 comparisons. Given this function, how might we characterize it? First, we ignore constants, removing the 2 in the denominator. Then we ignore lower order terms, and we're left with a simple quadratic function. This gives us a good estimate intuition as to how we should be analyzing this. However, we still need to prove it. Again, starting with the function, we can make it bigger by multiplying it by 2 and removing the denominator. Since the linear term is subtracted, adding it back in makes it bigger and simplifies the equation to what we had before. Thus, for c equals 1 and n not being 0, the inequality holds and selection sort is big O of n squared, an inefficient quadratic sorting algorithm. What about functions involving logarithms? such as base 2 or base 3 or the natural log. As an example, we'll show that log base 2 is big O of log base 3. To do so, we simply apply the change of base formula that allows you to change any algorithm's base. For b equals 2 and a equals 3, we get that log base 2 of n is equal to log base 3 of n divided by a constant. Evaluating that constant gives us an inequality that conforms to the definition of big O. Thus, for c being 1.585 and n not being 1, the inequality holds, and we've proven that log base 2 is big O of log base 3 of n. Note that we had to use 1 for n not, as the log function is undefined at 0. In fact, we could have shown the other way around as well, due to the change of base formula. It would actually show an asymptotic equivalence between these logarithm functions or a big theta characterization. In general, all logarithms are asymptotically equivalent to each other. Generally in computer science, we prefer to use log base 2, or binary, and we'll usually write log of n with no explicit base because this is an asymptotic equivalency to any other log base. For the definition of big theta, refer to the text or to one of the supplementary videos. Here's another example involving both polynomials and logarithms, or polylog functions. Let's show that 24n log of 32n is big O of n log n. We start with the left-hand side, and split it up using another log identity. Log of 32 simplifies, and we make the second term larger by multiplying by log n, which is a monotone growing function, so the inequality is satisfied. This allows us to simplify to one term. 
So for C being 144 and N not being 1, we've shown the big O characterization. Here's a final example involving exponential functions. We'll show that n times 2 to the n is big O of 3 to the n. Start with the left-hand side. We can observe that the linear function is a lower order term and is bounded by 2 to the n. Simplifying gives us 2 to the 2 to the n, or we could simplify it to 4 to the n. However, we've gone too far and made the function too big. It is no longer bounded by the second function. Let's try again. A linear function is still bounded by any exponential growing function. In particular, 1.5 to the n is larger than n for all n values greater than or equal to 0. This allows us to collect terms and simplify to 3 to the n. So for c being 1 and n not being 0, the inequality holds, and we've proven that n times 2 to the n is big O of 3 to the n. That is, exponential functions with larger bases grow faster than other exponential functions with smaller bases. Here are some of the most common classes of functions that arise from algorithm analysis. An algorithm that doesn't depend on the input size runs in constant time, or big O of 1. We have logarithmic algorithms such as binary search, linear algorithms of which we've seen a few examples. Quasi-linear algorithms are nearly linear except for a logarithmic factor. Many divide and conquer style algorithms, including merge sort and quick sort, fall into this category. Quadratic and cubic algorithms are also common, but are already inefficient for most practical input sizes. Both are generally polynomial. There are also exponential algorithms as well as super exponential algorithms, which are not practical for even small input sizes.